man returns home only to find his teeth have colored green. His wife calls him upstairs to join her in the bath. However, his body starts to convulse, and with a hissing sound, he rushes into the bathroom to tear his wife apart. In the blink of an eye, she is infected and her pupils turn green. Ever since the old lady drinks the water, her eyes and teeth color green, and she turns into a zombie attacking the cop. The baton is thrown but misses the zombie, so he runs around the car to get rid of the zombie before getting into the driver's side. Dan calls his fellow cops on the walkie-talkie for a backup and gets no response. By the time he tries to contact his daughter, she's fighting off the zombies on her own. More and more zombies are surrounding his car. On the other hand, on a golf course in the freezing cold, three millionaires who had just returned from a round of golf suddenly saw the people in the house running out of the room in a panic. The millionaires were very confused. A dog with green eyes stood in the doorway and barked furiously as it lunged at its owner, then bit her tightly on her neck. Her companions rushed to pull the dog away. The next second, a group of zombies ran towards them. The two men saw it and rushed to hide in the room. The moment they closed the door, the dog ran in. The zombie dog bites the man's foot and won't let go, but it was quickly kicked into the room and walked up. Just when they thought they were safe, the man who was bitten by the dog turned into a zombie. Michael had no choice but to hide in the kitchen and grab a kitchen knife and it behind the door. On the other hand, our hero, Andre, drinks several bottles of coke every day, which is why he gets a lot of abuse from his mom. Little did he know that his love of coke would help him to avoid a disaster. At night, he comes back to the fridge to get a coke, but by then his mom had turned into a zombie and came at him with green teeth, trying to bite him. At first, he thought his mom was just stressing out because she was usually so sweet and gentle. It was the first time he'd ever seen a crazy mother. He was so scared, he ran out of the house, but he crossed the street and fell to the ground. Just as his mother was about to jump on him, she was hit by a car. She doesn't give up and gets right back up. The man driving the car is the policeman we see at the beginning of the film. Then, he tells Andre to stay away from his mother, that the whole population of the island has been turned into zombies. He tells him to go back and close the doors and windows. Then he gets in his car to look for his daughter. When a herd of zombies came running towards him, Andre couldn't just leave his mother in the street, even though she had turned into a zombie. So he dragged her by her legs all the way back to the house and locked her in the bathroom. By this time, his young sister is bawling her eyes out. Outside the door, the zombies heard the cries and became restless. Worried about the zombies coming in, he kept stuffing his sister's bassinet. Eventually he filled the cradle and his sister stopped crying. The zombies outside the door quieted down when they couldn't hear the cries. Then he went to the door to see what was going on outside. He was startled when a cat came through a hole under the door. Then a zombie hen came in and grabbed his leg. Andre was terrified and went to hide in the house. After a while, the zombie calmed down without seeing anyone. The next morning, Andre went to the bathroom to check on his mom. His sister was creeping into the bathroom. Curious, his sister made a noise that woke up the zombie. Luckily, there was a glass barrier, so his sister escaped. In order to protect his sister, Andre started to lure his mother with curses. All the way from the bathroom to the living room, she accidentally kicked a cupboard. Then the TV fell over and hit her. Finally he dragged her into the bathroom. He looked at the green blood all over the room and wondered where he was going next. But he soon adjusted and got a ladder and leaned over the door to take a look. From his observations, he realized that the zombies were in a state of stasis. When there was no sound stimulation, he had to take his sister out to find supplies. So he opened the door and used the cat to attract the zombies' attention. And the poor cat became food for the zombies. A herd of zombies came up behind the boy. He runs towards the supermarket with his sister in his arms. The zombies were running so fast they lost their hats. Zombies from the neighborhood heard his sister's cries and swung the store. Unfortunately, the door to the supermarket was locked. Desperate, he gripped the golf club in his hand. He was ready to fight the zombies that were about to jump on him. Suddenly the door behind him opened. A hand drags him inside, and a horde of zombies are locked outside, banning on the door. Dan is the one who saves him. The two of them were trapped inside a supermarket. Dan learned that the root cause of the disaster was a golf course in the mountains. To keep the grass green in the winter, they developed a special pill that turned the water green when added to it. They sprayed the liquid on the lawn at night. However, the pills turned into a biovirus. When they got into the water, anyone who drank directly from the water became infected. Luckily for Andre, he only drank coke and his sister only drank bottled water. They both survived the mutation. While they were talking, Andre puts his sister on the ground. While she crawls alone to a more dangerous place, the cute little one stares out the glass door with white eyes. When Andre found his sister, a zombie was lying on the glass. Dan rushes over to pick her up. It turns out the zombie inside the glass door was Dan's daughter. When Dan found his daughter that day, she was already infected. He couldn't leave Patricia behind, so he put her in the freezer. 
Dan was convinced that he would find a cure for his daughter. After a long time, they never got help, so Dan called a friend at the radio station. But what he got back left him speechless. Because of the number of infected people on the island, the superiors had no choice but to abandon the island and send planes to blow up the only bridge, and their instructions were to kill a thousand rather than spare a single one. My god, are they all so cruel? Looks like they'll have to save themselves. The next morning, while the zombies were sunbathing, Andre came out with his sister in his arms. Dan covered Patricia's head with a birdcage. The slightest noise he makes causes his daughter to bite him. Luckily, the birdcage is a good shield. He pulled his daughter into the cart by force. The four of them drive away from the zombies. In order to find the source of the virus, they drove to the reservoir station, worrying that his sister would scream, so they left her in the car. The three of them walked in and the place was empty, but no sooner had they taken to steps than Patricia sprinted forward like a madwoman, all the way to a stinking cistern. She jumped right in without saying a word and plunged into the cistern. Dan, who was in a hurry, was worried. He was worried about his daughter and took off his jacket and jumped into the cistern. Luckily, the pool was not very deep and it found Patricia quickly. However, a zombie emerged from the pool. Dan was smart enough to use Patricia as cover, but luckily zombies don't attack their own kind. He was so scared, he held his daughter tightly, but Andre wasn't so lucky. The zombie smelled his scent and climbed out of the pool and chased him. The sound of him running out alerted the zombies. He picked up a bin and tried to block their path. It's a piece of cake. In the pool, Dan was trying to pull his daughter to shore. He gritted his teeth and pulled her hand as hard as he could. But as he did, he accidentally tore Patricia's hand off. Patricia dove right back into the pool. Andre is being chased by a group of zombies and runs towards the car. The zombies break down. On the window of the car, Dan pulls his daughter out. The zombies hear the noise and surround him. Dan again used his daughter to mask his scent. The zombies sniffed and realized it was one of their own. So they stayed put. Dan manages to out with the zombies and carefully opens the door and pushes his daughter into the car. In the car, Andre heard Patricia's mobile phone ringing. Andre pulls Patricia's shirt away from her and finds that her mobile phone has not been in the water at all. He was delighted. He tries to enter the coat to unlock it, but it's wrong. That's very sad. Then he pressed Patricia's hand, which had been ripped off by her father, against the screen, and the coat was unlocked. Dan, as her father, was very upset but couldn't stop him. Andre couldn't care less and grabbed his mobile phone to take a picture and post it. At the same time, on the other side of town, the military sent to twin assassins. They came to the town while equipped with the principle of never leaving a single zombie untouched. The steel zombies became their targets. The shots they fired were not fired in vain. Countless zombies fell into the snow. Soon all the zombies around were slaughtered by them. And this time they brought a special potion, throwing it on the ground and turning it into smoke, can cure the infected and cover up the disaster. On the other hand, Dan and Andre arrived at the golf course, but the gates were closed. He had to climb over the side wall into the room and opened the door to let his daughter and Andre in. Dan locked his daughter in the kitchen freezer. Andre made a wall with some benches to keep his sister in. The two of them split up to find the source of the disease. Andre came back to find his sister gone. It turns out the little baby crawled out all by himself. On the other hand, Dan found a large number of bombs in the basement. Unfortunately for him, he's just a steps away from becoming a zombie when his body starts to sway and he's about to turn into one. Turns out he accidentally drank a little water while he was driving. Oh. My god, it's going to be over. Just as the bomb was about to explode, he used his daughter's severed hand to stop the bomb's countdown at the last second of unconsciousness. Ah, uh, isn't that lucky? He also lost consciousness and fainted. On the other hand, the countdown on the twins watches stopped, so the two of them had to go back to the villa to check on the bomb. They arrived in the kitchen to find Andre's sister sitting on the floor eating a carrot. I didn't realize they were cold-blooded enough to spare a child. She poured pills on the floor and coaxed the baby to eat them. How could they do this to such a cute little baby? The twins left after the pills. Andre soon found his sister. He didn't know anything about what had just happened but just held his sister in his arms. But as soon as he stepped out of the kitchen, he was stopped by the twins. They strangled Andre and tried to force feed him the pills. But she made a mistake. She put her hand over Andre's sister's mouth. The baby's eyes turned green and it bit off one of her fingers. That's when Dan turned into a zombie and jumped the other killer. Andre stepped on a smoke bomb. The smoke spread and her sister inhaled it. As long as she inhaled the smoke, the mutated zombie would slowly return to adulthood. When Andre saw that Dan had turned into a zombie, she ran away and hid in the kitchen. Luckily, the smoke's healing properties were taking effect. Dan gradually regained his senses and stopped attacking. The twin killers were afraid that the other one would turn into a zombie. So they pulled out their pistols and killed each other. Oh, 
My God, they're so ruthless, they don't even spare their mates. Andre locked Dan and his daughter up together and posted the video online. He told the crowd that there were still people alive on the island who needed to be rescued. But there was more bad news when his superiors learned that the twin assassins had completed their mission. They sent a large contingent to clear the area. Andre arrives at the house and sees a group of soldiers approaching. He was about to wave for help when he realized that one of the survivors had been killed by the soldiers. He had to run away with his sister in his arms. His sister is now regaining her humanity. Soon after, Dan in the warehouse regained his humanity, and that's when the soldiers found him. The soldiers didn't care what he had to say. The soldiers killed them with flames. Of course, with the aura of a protagonist, Andre escaped with his sister. They finally saw a boat on the river coming towards him. I didn't think they'd be rescued by the netizens, but is the outside world as safe as he thinks?